Sami Hamdi is here. Sami is the editor at the current affairs magazine International Interest. Thanks so much for coming in, Sami. Seth Abramson is an American award-winning journalist. He's written a book called Proof of Collusion, How Trump Betrayed America. So maybe he has a particular issue about Trump. He has done some incredible investigative reporting on how Donald Trump is tied to Saudi Arabia. It hasn't totally been proven yet, but he's provided lots of evidence. What do you think about this relationship? I think it's a very interesting angle with which to explore the Khashoggi case in terms of looking at Trump's personal relations with Saudi Arabia. But I think that's a bit cherry-picking in the sense of the wider picture of Saudi and U.S. relationship. Saudi Arabia has always uh, had this approach towards the U.S. of lobbying, of, of the trying to uh, back certain congressmen, back certain presidents and the like. We know with regards to the Clinton Foundation and these other various different foundations in the past. This is not to suggest that it is correct, but we have to understand the ramifications of exploring Trump's personal relationship to Saudi Arabia. Does this, this could lead to a wider analysis of Saudi, Saudi Arabia's relationship with the U.S. Uh, in general. I think it's very interesting that Turkil Faisal alluded to the CIA's uh, uh, previous track record with regards to the Iraq war or whatnot. And I think it's actually very clever because it's one of those where objectively you have to agree with him. But subjectively you're aware what the purpose is behind what he's actually saying. I think it's very true that Trump is driven uh, mainly by commercial interests. But I think when you look at why he's backing Mohammed bin Salman, you see that this is actually a part of a wider picture between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. Because you think about Netanyahu's arguments to, to Donald Trump as to why to protect Mohammed bin Salman, it is to do with Iran. It is to do with uh, pushing this whole liberalization movement in the Arab world. And it's also to protect Mohammed bin Salman because he is leading the initiatives to uh, reconcile the other Arab countries with Israel. In other words, there are genuine interests at play in which the U.S. does have an interest. And the U.S. knows that there are other princes in Saudi Arabia who might be more reluctant and fearful of the general Arab public opinion in issues such as this. Even when you look at issues with regards to Iran, Saudi Arabia genuinely believes that it is surrounded by Iran, whether it's in the north or via Iraq, south via Yemen, uh, Lebanon, uh, and, and the like. So I think it's an interesting angle to look at the personal relationship with Donald Trump and, uh, and, and, and Saudi Arabia. But we should be aware that this is not an issue that is unique to Donald Trump. This is an issue between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. And the reality is, I think, and I encourage this investigation, because this investigation will essentially demonstrate to the world whether the U.S. is actually a country that can be bought or whether it's a country that is genuinely driven by the various principles that it espouses. The actual investigation and the results of it and the reactions to it have reached almost a stalemate. So I want to take you beyond that. Could Jamal Khashoggi achieve in death what he was trying to in life? Could this whole incident and the pressure being placed on Mohammed bin Salman actually lead to an end of the blockade of Qatar? Could it lead to the end of Saudi Arabia's military involvement in Yemen and eventually a peace in that country? In other words, reforms in Saudi Arabia that Jamal Khashoggi was calling for. He never said the royal family should be replaced. He just said reforms should be implemented more quickly. That was his big thing. I think what is, what is very interesting is that uh, the, the way in which Mohammed bin Salman is trying to demonstrate that he is uh, okay, that he is uh, backing the investigation, uh, he's trying to show that he believes that Trump and the Israelis and the like will be able to get him off the hook. We know now he's doing a tour, he's going to be going to Bahrain, there's talk of him going to Tunisia, to these places, to show the world that I can still go out of Saudi Arabia, I'm still welcomed, I'm still respected, uh, and the like. With regards to reforms, there are rumors going around in Saudi Arabia that he's been going to various princes saying, I will change my ways, I will devolve power, I will allow things to go here and there and the like. But I think with regards to Mohammed bin Salman, the reality is that we have to look at the region and the standards that apply in the region. This is not a, a world, the Middle East is not an area where human rights and, and these kind of things apply. We have to remember this is a region where Sisi opened fire on thousands of protesters, killed hundreds and got away with it, Rabah Adawiyah. We have to remember that this is a region that has seen whole opposition parties uh, imprisoned without even a whisper. We have to remember that even in Saudi Arabia, Suleiman al Amnesty International, is saying that he's been killed under torture, for example, in Saudi Arabia. I think Mohammed bin Salman's aim is not even to, to give these reforms. He will say what he needs to survive. Let's remember that he was calling in London, he, in London he was calling Turkey part of an axis of evil. And then he was saying in the Davos in the Desert Forum that nobody can ruin Saudi and Turkey relationship as long as President Erdogan is in Turkey and I am here in Saudi Arabia. We saw him praise Qatar's economy, which is a very uh, moving away from this whole idea of the fact that he blockaded Qatar. There were even rumors that when Khaled al-Faisal came to Ankara, that he told Erdogan, we will lift the blockade, we will give you investment, we will give everything, but please 
please just end this issue for us. And Erdogan angrily, angrily told him, there's no way I'm going to be bribed in terms of what I'm doing. I think Mohammed bin Salman believes at this moment in time that he can get away with it. When he sees Donald Trump undermining his own CIA, though he's thinking, this is fantastic. I have a man in the White House who will protect me and the like. Mohammed bin Salman, I think, now is at this stage. He's not at the stage of reforms. He's at the stage where Netanyahu, Bibi, Donald Trump, bail me out. And I think you can bail me out. If it looks like they're not, if this investigation takes place and Donald Trump comes under significant pressure, we may see lifting of blockade, we may see investments in Turkey, we may see the whole, uh, every, everything happening. But at this moment in time, this is not the case. In two answers, you've answered all ten of my questions. <laughs> Sami Hamdi, thanks so much for Thank coming in. Thank you very in. much. Appreciate thanks. It.